there's one thing I can say about this edition of Monday Night Raw is that it was a three hour professional wrestling television program periodically interrupted by commercial breaks on the USA Network. That is exactly what it was. It also wasn't half bad. Yeah, it was only about 40% bad. <laughs> uh, I mean, <clears throat> building up to a pay-per-view that I don't think anybody really gives a shit about. Yeah. Uh, I think they did a decent job of trying to sell us on the pay-per-view. Uh, starting with Enzo coming out and voicing his opinion about Cass. And, yeah. And, the, you know, now he... He doesn't feel like he needs to pull any punches because, you know, Cass has laid his cards on the table. So Enzo's just going to talk how he feels, and he cut a pretty damn good promo. Yeah. And Cass retorted not too long after with a bunch of the things that he's been saying for the last couple weeks. And then Enzo flew through the air and attacked Cass in the back. Uh, and they are now having a match this Sunday. At, Fire Nick the pay-per-view. At Fire Nick the pay-per-view. Uh, then we op- then our first match was a women's tag team match. We had Sasha and Bailey taking on Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. And then shortly thereafter, it was just Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. Yeah, Bailey got taken out by a running knee from Nia Into Jax. Into the barricade. Just making Bailey seem like the daintiest woman on They're the They're burying Bailey. It is yeah. awful. Uh, I I just want to I just want to think that perchance. That they're playing up the fact that potentially, like, Bailey's got, like, some sort of head injury spawning, like, all the way back. Because it keeps being kind of sort of like a reoccurring theme that, like, headshots affect Bailey really bad ever since she hit the post against that in that match against Alexa Bliss. When she, yeah, when she lost, I mean, that would make sense, but they haven't really been focusing on that, no. so... I don't know. Plus, I don't think they turn that into a storyline since that's something they try to, that's something yeah. they try to avoid. So I don't know. But Sasha ended up winning the handicap match all by herself, as uh, Nia's knee was actually injured in the shot against Bailey, and so that was kind yeah, of. Yeah, you sensitive. know, you know that somebody's head is injured if you hit them so hard your knee is injured. Yeah. So she ended up kicking Nia in the knee, and then made Alexa Bliss tap out to the bank statement. We actually had Alexa Bliss later say that she strategically let Sasha win to get Sasha's hopes up so she'll lose the title match. Give her a false sense of security. Yeah. Uh, We had Braun Strowman uh, go into Kurt Angle's office and demand that he get some competition. Yeah. Because he knows that Roman Reigns isn't going to be there. He's not even sure that Roman Reigns is going to be there on Sunday. But he will because I'm Kurt Angle and I'm the general manager. And if I say it, it'll happen. Yeah. And so... Like, Rob will be good one day. So it's up to Kurt to try and find someone for Braun to fight later. Or is it up to a different bald guy in a suit? We'll find out. We also had Cedric Alexander saying, Okay, Noam Dar, come out here right now so I can beat your ass and then I can give you a matching neck brace so you and Foxy can uh, you know, go do your own thing. Alicia Fox made her return to Noam Dar's corner. And despite an attempted distraction from Alec- uh, from Alexa from Alicia Fox, uh, Cedric Alexander times. still hit the lumbar check and defeated Noam Dar. Yep. Are they done? What could hope? I think we're all hoping at this point. Ms. TV trying to save Ms. TV from last week. We didn't even realize what happened last week. Until after the fact. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're trying to play it up like, oh, it was, it was a huge rating spike. It was a big thing. that Everyone was talking about it because LeVar Ball got all up in Miz's face. No, it's because the kid said the N-word twice. I mean, it did sort of be a rating spike in general. Like, but, you know, sports, but that was- sports people... Yeah. So anyway, yeah, this was just Miz putting himself over and talking about how he thinks it's stupid that the Ball family is trying to have Dean Ambrose uh, be kind of like a spokesman for them. Uh, And so Dean Ambrose came out and said, 
You know, I, I think it's funny that you're out here, you're, you're talking your usual stuff, and you're hiding behind bodyguards when you know that I can come down there and kick your ass anyway. Which brings me to my next point. I want my Intercontinental title rematch now. And then Heath Slater came out. Yeah, Heath Slater going, you know, Dean, you weren't the last person to beat The Miz in that ring. That was that was me. And I've never gotten a singles title match. So I want a shot at the Intercontinental title. And then The Miz told them both that he decides when title matches happen. Then bald guy in a suit comes out. Kurt Angle saying, no, no. I'm the general manager. I decide when title matches happen. And the Miz is like, all right, pick one. I'll fight at Great Balls of Fire. All right, cool. You're going to fight Dean Ambrose at Great Balls of Fire. Yay. But tonight, you're going to face Heath Slater. What? Fuck. So we had Heath Slater challenging for the Intercontinental title match. Yes. For, 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 what the fuck? Uh, I don't know why I said that. And he did a really good job. I enjoyed this match a lot. Miz was not ready Heath for Slater's this match. Heath Slater's a really good wrestler. Miz was not ready for this. He was in like dress pants and a, and a suit, and his dress pants ended up ripping uh, part way through the match. Uh, At least he had tape with him. Yeah, I th- I'm, I'm sure Bo probably had it hidden under his one glove or something. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he. I mean, it was a great match. Uh, Dean Ambrose was on commentary. He made it even more exciting. He was like. He was all amped up for the match, too. Yeah. He, was, he was excited while he was watching it. Well, he even admitted on commentary that Heath Slater was one of his favorite wrestlers yeah. to watch. Yeah, so a feather in the cap to Heath Slater. And uh, he likes the idea of going to Heath Slater's trailer for some hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Summer yeah, he, sausage and cheese whiz. Yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't had the pleasure, but he'd like to. Um... Yeah, it was a fantastic match. Stay away from the cheese whiz. That's right up. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to take cheese whiz. Cheese <laughs> what is wrong with me tonight? I don't know. You sound like the Monday Night Raw commentary team. Hello, I'm Michael T. Because if I was Corey Graves, I'd be talking normal. And yeah. I'm not. Uh, yeah, eventually... Uh, because we have Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas at ringside, they're obviously going to get involved. Uh, Curtis Axel tried to, like, cause a distraction. Rhino came around, yanked him off of the apron. And then it was a double-team attack on Rhino that distracted Heath Slater. Heath Slater ended up hitting, like, uh, like a power slam, or like a power, yeah, power slam off the top rope. Yeah. Uh, to the Miz, and everyone thought he was going to win, and he was... Absolutely on the verge of winning until he was distracted and was hit with a skull crushing finale, and the Miz retained the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, then there was a multi person beatdown. Dean Ambrose tried to get involved uh, and ended up getting laid out himself, and so uh, Miz and the Entourage stood tall on Monday Night Raw. And we're going to have Great Balls of Fire, the Miz. Versus Dean Ambrose for the gajillionth time. Yep. Woo. You know you're talking about that bald guy talking someone into t- fighting Braun Strowman? Was it another bald guy? It was another bald guy. What? He even talked another bald guy into facing Braun Strowman. But neither bald guy was Kurt Angle. What? It was Titus O'Neil. <laughs> said, hey, you want to make a name for yourself, Apollo? Yes, said Apollo. Go fight Braun Strowman. Fuck. Okay. And Apollo thought that like that was the coolest thing. Like that's brilliant. That's gonna that's gonna make my name. I'm cool. Yeah, let's do this. And then they came up with the catchphrase: "Crews can't lose." Your idea was stupid. Your catchphrase is stupid. Titus Worldwide is stupid. You're all stupid. Run, Tozawa. Yeah, Tozawa, get out while you still can. Win that championship on Sunday and get the fuck out of Dodge. Or Houston. That's where you'll be. Uh, we had Goldust presenting The Shattered Truth. Uh, doing his own, like, his director's chair promo in the ring. And uh, a little montage of different <laughs> camera angles of his beat down on our truth last week. Um... Which, after it was over, wasn't very long. Including a lot of shots which I appreciated from the camera 
that was being held by not Star Spud. Yeah. No, and that's that's what I th I thought all the camera angles were gonna be of that, but they actually use like panned out shots like from his entrance because Gold does, uh, you know he he got an he got an entrance and you know and then they were they were focusing more, we were focused more on the fact that there was another person in the ring so we weren't getting a lot of like the regular close up shots that we usually do yeah. of the of the person so it was like yeah it just kind of connected pieces all really great. Uh, and then when it was over, uh, our our truth had made his way to the ring and was eating popcorn behind Gold Dust. Uh, and then Gold Dust did the worst <laughs> attempt at throwing a chair at somebody <laughs> I've ever seen. He, he like jumped up, grabbed the chair, and threw it that way. <laughs> he was no like, was right he's there. like, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I missed! Oh. And so then our truth proceeds. Ouch. Ouch. Our truth proceeds to beat down Gold Dust. Uh, I don't know if they're actually set to have a match at Great Balls of Fire, but I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's announced hey, throughout the week. Speaking of Great Balls of Fire, or Fire Dick the Pay Per View, whatever you want to call it, the Hardy Boys yes. will challenge the bar in a 30 minute Iron Man match for. The tag team titles. Yep. I'm excited for this. Yep. But Cesaro wanted a two-nut match. Warm-up match. Against Finn Balor. I mean, sure. If that's Boy, everybody, their mother got involved with that one. Yeah, no shit. We or had I guess their brother. We, that, that makes more sense. Because we had the Hardy Boys in commentary. Uh, we had Elias Samson cause a distraction. Uh, we had obviously Seamus at ringside. Yeah, with his kilt. With his kilt. Kilt. Uh, yeah, no, we we ended up having like big, like once Elias came down, that was when Matt told Jeff like, hey, we need to watch these two guys on the outside. And, Especially because it's Finn Balor, he's our boy. And then Elias ended up tripping uh, Finn Balor, and Matt goes, oh, that's our cue, go. And so they yeah, he's run. Like, he's like. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, the match itself was fantastic. Yeah. Cesaro versus Finn Balor was great. Uh, uh, this this is something that I feel like should be headlining a pay-per-view. Absolutely. This, Finn Balor should be Universal Champion right now. It should be in matches like this. Yeah, like next year when Fire Nick the pay-per-view comes around. If it's not Finn Balor versus Cesaro in the day of it, I'm going to be sad. Exactly. Uh, Finn Balor ended up picking up the win after a big house finish on the outside. Hit the coup de gras into the barricade. Tossed Cesaro in. Hit the coup de gras. And won the match. But, speaking of Fire Dick the pay-per-view, once again, the Universal Championship match we are getting... Is Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar? Yes. And we had a. It wasn't face to face. No. It was a. It was a. Camera to camera. Interview. A one on one interview. <clears throat> yeah. Where neither of them wanted to listen to Michael Cole's questions, which is great because we don't either. Uh, and Joe, I see. I I don't understand why Joe is the heel here because. Joe's like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, you know, you want to hide, you don't want to be on TV, I'm, I'm out here, like, making statements, I want to fight right now. I feel like that's a babyface thing. And so, Joe just decides, fuck it, I don't want to talk to this camera anymore, I'm going to pull all this shit off, and I'm going to go fucking find you. And he's storming through the halls, he's being stopped by referees. And Regal watching Monday Night Raw starts having... Post traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he's just sitting there going, "Kurt, Kurt, this isn't good. This isn't good. People are gonna die." And so he like 
Joe turns a corner, and there's Kurt Angle and, like, seven security guards. But what I love also is at some point, like, Joe gathers an entourage of agents and referees. Yeah, it's like, like as he they was going... following him. Yeah, he's, he's just got, like, this group of people. <laughs> and they're telling him, don't, no, like, no, don't do it. Just wait for Sunday, Joe. But no one's actually making a move to, like, try and stop him. And the best part is when he sees Kurt and the security guards, who are to the left of him... Joe realizes, wait, Brock's over here. And so instead of having to go back through the referees that have followed him or through the security guards, he goes, fuck it, and veers right and just goes straight for the door. But all the security guards are there already grabbing onto him as Brock and Paul are just like, come on, Joe, what are you going to do? And they're just like, just hanging out in the room watching Joe get dragged away by security guards. Proving that Monday Night Raw has higher dollar security guards than NXT. Well. Because if they were NXT security guards, Samoa Joe would have killed them all and ate half of them. <laughs> uh, probably shared one with Brock. And then we wouldn't have a Universal Championship match. They'd both be in jail for murder. Yep. Seth Rollins defeated Kurt Hawkins. Then he talked about Bray Wyatt. Then Bray Wyatt was getting hot. <laughs> I really liked the Bray Wyatt promo. I liked the, the direction he took because uh, Seth's whole thing is he's going to prove that Bray isn't a god on Sunday. The uh, one thing I'm trying to figure out, though, is like Bray Wyatt like is now taking credit for everything yeah. that's happening on Monday he's, Night Raw. He's calling himself the god of chaos. Yeah. And so as soon as he came to Monday Night Raw, we now have the breakup of the Golden Truth, the breakup of Enzo and Cass, and Brock Lesnar isn't as strong as everyone thought he was. And so he, like, none of that had happened until he showed up on Raw. And so he's taking credit for all of these strange things that are happening on Raw. And I kind of like that he took that direction. That he's, he's making, him, making himself feel all more... All the more almighty as, like... I just oh. want there to be, like, a rebuttal from Seth where he just pops back on the screen and just goes... <laughs> you don't question religion. You do if you're Seth Rollins. That's true. Or but George Carlin. Will... Yeah, George Carlin. Question right. everything. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, so that is more built for Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins. Which will that happen? Fire Dick the pay-per-view. Yes. Guess what else is happening at Fire Dick the pay-per-view? Uh... Neville versus Tazala? That's the one! But tonight we had Neville versus Mustafa Ali, which yeah. was a fantastic match. Uh, Mustafa gets some great shots in on Neville. Which I don't know why he wears that, like, sleeveless top. Why? Because he's got, like, his torso is shaped like Cass's torso. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got, like, weird man movies. <laughs> He's, he, but he's got like six pack abs. He just no definition. He needs to wear like a big Stevie Cool <laughs> crop top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fantastic match between these guys, uh, but uh, Neville was able to. Uh, I I mean it was it was kind of out of nowhere. I had to watch the replay to actually realize what happened. But Mustafa was going for his rolling neck breaker, and Neville like. Dodge just out of the way, so when Mustafa got up, then he hit him with a fucking lariat yeah. and almost took Mustafa's head off. That dropped Mustafa uh, right in position for Neville to lock in the rings of Saturn and made Mustafa tap out. So, yeah. Very quickly. Neville, looking strong, heading towards a match with Akira Tozawa, who we didn't see on Monday Night Raw, so we'll probably see him on 205 Live. I would assume. Maybe. Um, and that brings us to Apollo Crews trying to make a name for himself. Oh, yeah. Uh, Braun came down, brought an ambulance with him. Just carried it to the ring. Yep, just under his arm. Like, like a clutch. Uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> this... I mean, parts of it went okay 
for Apollo Crews. The beginning parts, where he was playing the shuck and die, drive like a boxer. Yeah, he's yeah he's doing the doing a little like little quick jabs, backing up, getting some distance. Uh, a couple of the middle parts went okay. Um, oh, really, well, actually, really only like four. Because Braun beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And then he got all fired up because Titus is like, you get your ass back in there. And Titus took his jacket off and he slapped him on the titty. And he said, get back in there and fight for, and fight for your kid. And Apollo's like, okay. And he got in there and he hit two big enziguris. And then he hit like a couple of running kicks. And then he went for a fucking standing moonsault. And he got double booted out of the fucking air. You ever see like a kangaroo lean back and double kick something? That's it's what, like that. That's what Braun did to Apollo. It's like that. And Apollo almost landed on his goddamn head. And it was fucking scary. And that was the. It looks like a. It looked like Apollo Cruz got clotheslined by an invisible person. <laughs> <laughs> and it was over at that point. Uh, Braun hit a power slam, went for a pin, picked him up. Hit another power slam, went for a pin, picked him up. Hit a third very emphatic power slam and then defeated Apollo Crews. Uh, Titus tried to step up to Braun Strowman. And that didn't work out well for Titus. So he got like three good punches in, but then got beat up and power slammed. Because that's what happens when you go against Braun Strowman. So Braun decides, well, I'm going to do with Apollo Crews the same thing I did with Roman Reigns last week. So he tossed him into the crowd. Walked all the way over to the ambulance, chucked him in the back, and tapped it twice, and that's usually the sign for the ambulance to drive away. But all it did was turn his lights on. So he tapped it twice again, and it turned the siren on. But it still wasn't driving. So he tapped it twice again, and the siren turned off. Braun's like, what the fuck is this driver doing? This guy is a fucking moron. So he walks around to the driver's side and looks in. He has to like cup his hands around his eyes to look inside. He's like, hey, what the fuck is going on? And he opens and You bet your ass Roman is in there going like this. Because <laughs> he opens the door and of course Roman Reigns comes flying out, fist punching Braun. I, I was really hoping that Roman's fist would go through the window because that would have been fucking hilarious. But it didn't. Because Roman is boring. Well, you know, you know why Roman stopped and beat up Braun Strowman at this point. Why? Because R Roman wasn't supposed to appear on this run. This is my theory. Roman, Roman was driving the ambulance as like an Easter egg. Oh, okay. So just, just for people who noticed. Yeah, like if you were in like that section of the crowd, way towards the stage, you might have yeah. seen it. Steve fell over. Steve. He doesn't like this theory. <laughs> Steve gives no fucks. Uh. But no, see, what was supposed to happen is Braun was supposed to actually, like, murder Titus and put Titus in the ambulance. And make... Oh! And when it was the wrong guy, Roman got pissed off. And, like, instant transmission? No, I mean, he was in there. He oh, was okay. driving oh, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Easter egg, right. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Still, his fish should have gone through the window. Uh, yes. I just think, for me, what I wanted to see was him, like, bzzz, roll the window down electronically really slow and then punch Braun <laughs> once and then roll the window back up with the little <laughs> <laughs> and then drive away yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that, no. would, that would have made me like Roman Reigns that would complete way <laughs> uh, but instead I blow my nose on him yeah instead they fought they brawled and then they fell through tables yeah. strategically placed off stage Almost as if they knew Roman Reigns was going to spear Braun Strowman off the edge. And they both pissed themselves in midair. It's just not as impactful because the stage isn't as, isn't as high as it used to be. No, it's not. So it's just kind of like, oh, they fell backwards onto, you know, you know, tables at the same height as the stage, which is like two feet. So that's happening. Ambulance match. Fire Nick the pay-per-view. Yep. We got predictions coming out later this week. Yeah. But for now, guys.
thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe. Click the links. There's a lot of links. Like a podcast. There's a lot of links. And <laughs> and reasonable wrestling fans. It's reasonable to W. Like, like wrestling. wrestling. Oh my god. There's all kinds of extra videos over there, but you want to stay on this channel because not only will we have the predictions for Fire Dick the Pay Per View, we will also have a top five. For the month of June, brought to you by Mr. Kevin Hall. But for now, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Fuck Titus Worldwide. Probably kind of What do you say? <laughs>